Hi, this is Pratik and welcome to Code Pi. In this video lesson, we're going to learn about doing in order traversal of a threaded binary tree. Now, once you have converted your binary tree into a threaded binary tree, it brings in more connections within the entire tree structure. And this is going to make it more convenient to do in order traversal of that threaded binary tree. And one thing you should keep in mind that the inner traversal of a binary tree and that of a threaded binary tree are both the same. They'll both fetch the same result. Now the benefit of doing inner traversal of this threaded binary tree is that you can do inner traversal without even using a recursion or a stack. This makes the entire process very simpler and a lot more faster. Now in the previous tutorial, I had taken this as an example of a binary tree and I have converted this to a threaded binary tree and as you can see there are more connections present in this threaded binary tree now if you have studied in order traversal earlier then you can make out by looking at the binary tree itself what should the in order traversal be so it's 4762513 so if you had to do the in order traversal of the binary tree then if you had used recursion then remember that in recursion, uh, suppose that you have printed 4, then you have printed 7, then to print 6, you have to come back to the upper column function and you have to do that several times. And also function calling is pretty much expensive. And if you had done this by, by using a stack, then you have to continuously doing pop and push operations from the stack, which is also certainly going to increase the time complexity of the problem. But once you have converted this binary tree to its threaded form, then you can see that there is a connection from 7 to 6. There is a connection from 6 to 2. So basically, you need not use a recursive way of doing this traversal. You can simply, when you reach 7, you can jump off to 6. And when you reach 6, you can jump up uh, to 2 and so on. Now to do another traversal of this threaded binary tree, one thing is pretty much clear is that you have to reach to the leftmost element present in this tree, that is 4. So the first step that you're going to do is to reach the leftmost node of the threaded binary tree. And upon doing that, you are going to encounter either of the two scenarios. That is, either the leftmost node is threaded or, or the leftmost node has a right subtree. So in this case, the leftmost node is 4 and it has a right subtree. So if the leftmost node has a right subtree, then you're gonna perform step number 1 again. That is, you reach out to the leftmost node present in the right subtree. And after reaching its leftmost node, you will again gonna encounter either of the two scenarios. That is, either it's gonna be threaded or it also has a right subtree. And since this first operation is going to take place again and again, so it's better that we make a separate function which defines this first operation. We're going to do that while we code. So this was the case when the leftmost node has a right subtree. But what if the leftmost node is threaded? So in that case, you're going to simply move to the right of that node. So like in this subtree, you see that uh, after doing the first operation that is reaching the leftmost node, which is 7, you gonna have to face two scenarios. That is, either it is threaded or it has a right subtree. In this case, it is threaded. So you simply move to the right of 7, that is 6. So that's it. It's as simple as that. You only have to check for two scenarios, whether it is threaded or it has a right subtree. If it has a right subtree, repeatedly do the first operation else if it is threaded then simply move to its right now to begin with uh, so this was all the code for converting a binary tree to a thread binary tree and now we have to do in our traversal of the thread binary tree so we will begin by defining a helper function which will be helping us to reach to the leftmost node that is doing the first operation so i'm going to define a function called left and i'm going to pass the root parameter into it so it will take into taking the root of the threaded binary tree as the parameter and it will always help us reach out to the leftmost node of that given tree so first we are going to check if root is not none so if root passed is not none in that case 
we can say that if the root has a left then go to that left so we can do this by using a while loop while root dot left simply move to the left and since this is a helper function which we are gonna use in uh, another function so this has to return something so in this case I am gonna return the leftmost node so now I'm gonna define a function called in our traversal and this function will be actually responsible for doing the in our traversal of the threaded binary tree and this left function will be used within this in our traversal function so first thing remember that to do in our traversal first we reach to the leftmost node now I have already defined a function which takes us to the leftmost node so I'm gonna use that helper function here and I am gonna pass the root of the thread binary I am gonna reach to the leftmost node and I am gonna assign current name to that leftmost node so now after you have finished doing the first step that is reaching out to the leftmost node you have to check for two things that is either it is threaded or it has uh, the leftmost node has a right subtree so these two checking processes are continuously happening again and again and you can see that it always happens in a loop that is if it is threaded you simply move right or if it is having a right subtree then you again repeat the first operation again and then again you're going to encounter these two checking operations so these two things have to be embedded inside a loop and here i'm going to use a while loop so i am going to write while one so i not specified the breaking condition of this while loop so i will specify it later and in this while loop our first task would be to print out the leftmost node that we have reached so I'm going to simply print current dot data because current is the leftmost node that we have got from here. And after doing this, first we are going to check if that current node is threaded or not. So I'm going to write if current dot threaded is equal to one, then we're going to simply move to its right. But again, a question arises that from where did this come in? So initially remember that uh, in the previous video while we were doing the conversion of the binary into a thread by tree we did not specify any parameter that mentioned that yes this node is threaded or this node is not threaded but we are going to do it now so in the class node we are going to specify by default that none of the nodes are threaded when they are created but while doing the conversion when we create links and we are linking a node to the front of the queue like this so here the node got linked to the front of the queue so this is the place where threading is taking place and when this happens for that particular node i am gonna turn this switch from zero to one so here i'm gonna write that change the threaded variable which is assigned to that node to one which means that node will get threaded and its variable will get changed to one and this is how we're gonna know whether a node is threaded or not so if this threaded variable attached to a node is zero it is not threaded but if it is one which means it gets threaded so as you can see here that just to relate with the previous tutorial that when we reached out to seven we saw that it doesn't have a right link so we uh, linked 7 to whatever was present at the front of the queue and uh, this is how it 7 got threaded to its in order successor and we changed its threaded variable to 1 here so now having done that we can make use of this variable and when we check the threaded variable to be 1 which means it is threaded then we simply move to the right of that node else if the node is not threaded then, then this means that it is having a right subtree and when it has a right subtree then I can mention that in the else part so else if it has a right subtree then I'm gonna take that right subtree and I'm gonna move to the leftmost node present in that right subtree so again to move to the leftmost node I have to perform I have to make use of the left, left function that I declared earlier this so I will make use of that function and I will reach to the leftmost node of that subtree and I'm gonna again name it as current and eventually when these processes take place then there will be a point in which 
the current will become none. For example, when we finally reach to 3 by doing the in-order traversal, then at 3 you can see that 3 is not threaded, which means for the node 3, this condition is not true, which means it's gonna come to the else part. And in this else part, it's gonna make use of the left function and it's gonna pass current dot right. So 3's right is none. All right, so none is gonna be passed as parameter here. So in this left function, when none is passed as the parameter and it checks if none, which means all these three steps uh, do not get executed. So here the root becomes none, which means here root should not be none for these three steps to take place, which means now this left function will simply return none. Here. So this left function simply returns none and our current becomes none. So again, this while loop runs, but we do not have to run this again because when the current becomes none, we are done with the process of printing the in order traversal. And here we can simply break the while loop by saying that if the current is none, then simply break the while loop. So now I'm going to call the in order traversal function in the main and I'm going to comment out these three lines because we no longer need them. So it's time we run this program. So here is it. So we printed the in order traversal uh, very accurately. So it is 4762513, which is what we wanted. So if you want, I can also show you that yes, current finally becomes none. So I'm going to simply print current to show you that whether current becomes none or not at the end. So now if we run this, we see this result. So here yeah, you can see that after printing 3, we reached none, which means our current becomes none and our while loop breaks. So this is what we wanted and I hope that this thing is clear to you. So like and share this video and subscribe to the channel.